So along those lines, I'd love to I'd love to give back and share my story. And if that can change one one kid's attitude towards footy or his diet or what he does on weekends to make himself a better person, a better player, um, is what I'm striving for. G'day, I'm Mitch Robinson, uh, Brisbane Lions player number five. I'm a proud ambassador for our side of locker room. Yeah, um, growing up was you know normal Tassie life. I uh, lived in a bit of a farm type area. Um, sport was kind of my outlet for uh, most weekends. I, I tried to play every sport I could. Uh, so my parents said just to make sure that I could find the right talent I, that I had. Um, tried to play basketball, got fat out a lot. Um, cricket wasn't really for me, so footy was kind of the avenue that I had for most weekends. It kept me out a little bit of trouble, but um, seemed to find its way uh, towards the end. Um, it was probably, that's probably where the problems actually started when I was a bit younger. Like you'd get paid and you just chuck it back over the bar. And as a 16 year old, you know, playing local footy, that's kind of the norm where I was coming from. So um, I reckon that probably started a lot of uh, the hardships of trying to be a professional footballer. I um, didn't really take a footy seriously until I was about 16, 17 to a mum and dad um, kind of moved me out of home. When I, when I got uh, expelled from grade 11, I went and lived in Adelaide with my sister. So that's how my career kind of started and I uh, took it seriously when I was around 17. Yeah, definitely. As you, as I played footy with you, you probably realised I came into the into the club and I was, you know, pretty outlandish and outspoken and stuff. I was just trying to be myself. Um, you know, some players would have taken a backward step and gone, "What's this bloke's deal?" type thing. But I was trying to be myself, and um, I've always had the kind of rough exterior, especially when I'm playing footy. So I was just trying to use that um, as leverage to try and um, get a game in the seniors. So, but yeah, I've just tried to always have that a. Uh, um, chip my shuttle type thing to prove people that I'm actually deserve to play AFL um, and over the course of the time I've had my ups and downs, been delisted, um, come up here and won the best and fairest type thing and it's, uh, it's, it's really proven to a lot of people I hope to inspire them in Tassie especially that you don't need that pathway, you know that perfect pathway to make AFL and be a consistent player that you can have your own avenue to go so that's what I want to give out. Um, it, was, it, was, it was hard because I was drinking a lot at the same time so in my first year, it was pretty much every weekend. Like a lot of the first year boys would go out clubbing, drinking, and it wouldn't be wouldn't be looked down upon at the time. So I thought that was the norm, and especially coming from the local footy. That's what we did every weekend. So it was one of those things that kind of snowballed effect into um, not remembering most nights when I go out and think it's pretty funny. Like oh, you had a great night. You know, didn't get in trouble. And then sometimes when I would get in trouble, it was like I couldn't control that because I was under the influence. So. I put a lot of things in place since that last year at Colton to help me um, be a better person and making sure that I can provide for my family because that was a massive one when I got delisted, it kind of all hit home and I was just like, wow, I'm not an AFL player now and I, well, what's my next steps? I hadn't planned anything to do post footy. Um, so now I've got a lot of things in the bag. I've studied sports journalism, uh, got my full real estate license, studying accounting now. So I want to be a player manager and help players as well. Um, for their life post footy and during their careers to see those kind of those warning signs. That, that night that uh, the one the BNF was um, very special for not just myself but for Emma and my partner and you know and my son because she's she's dragged me out of that hole she's like during the, my whole career that I've been with her for six years seven years now um, she's seen the worst in me and she's seen you know the best in me and she's been that that uh, that rock I guess you can say like that's helped me during my period like, a lot of people don't have that and I had that so she She's been through a lot, so it's more for her, I think, that, um, that, I, that I was more happy for, because she's put a lot of hard work into me. But I kind of, at the same time, I feel um, that I let Colton down at the same time. I still have that in my head, that I um, didn't give them the best me. And that always kind of plays in my mind sometimes that um, I could have had a really good career there, um, could have gave back a lot more. So I've taken that opportunity to revamp my career and start again. And, make sure that doesn't happen twice so it's um I see a lot of myself in the youth that um that I've done previously talks with um I just kind of wish that I had that um exposure when I was younger to kind of see the warning signs before it started happening so alcohol might have been mine at the time but I wouldn't have known that it was a bad thing because I've seen that growing up with that but I've, I'm glad that I've been through those experiences that I can try and shape someone else from not doing that so um, if any way my story can help someone else or even just some you know, experience purposes for my children when they start growing up and I can see that happening, the signs, and I can stop them where it happens and just kind of show, look, look, this is what happened to me, it can happen to anyone type of thing. Like, I might go on the field and try and be you know, that tough bloke and the way I play footy and stuff, but I feel like mentally it's a lot different to what you do when you cross that line. So um, 
it's something that I, I want to be proud of when I finish footy and my kids can be proud of me too. So.